Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Cloud Ops Junction. So in this video, we are going to have an overview on uh, SCCM boundaries and the boundary groups. So without wasting any time, let's jump into the video and uh, have an overview about it. So in SCCM, boundaries uh, in SCCM represent a network location such as uh, such as IP address, uh, Active Directory site and services, IPv4 and IPv6 uh, that helps the SCCM to identify a geographical location of devices that you want to manage in your infrastructure. So that is known as boundary. All right. And uh, SCCM use boundaries to define the scope of management for clients and uh, facilitate content distribution and client communications. So this is a very basic uh, role of having a boundaries in your environment so the boundary import if i say if ever if i talk about the importance of the boundaries so boundaries play a crucial role in sccm uh, functionality it helps client location i mean it helping clients to locate their nearest sccm systems to get the latest policy from the management point, getting the latest content from the distribution point, uh, getting the updates from uh, metadata from SUP, that is the software update point, and so on. It's also enable the effective communications uh, with the distribution point to determine the closest distribution point. It also help to communicate with the site system for getting the policies and software update for uh, software deployment. So and sorry i forgot about the boundary groups so boundary groups are nothing boundary groups uh, are logically collections of boundaries that allow administrator to organize and manage boundaries effectively each boundary groups can contain one and one and more boundaries and a boundaries can be belongs to multiple boundary groups so that is what uh, uh, boundary groups are essential for content distribution, client management communications because they are determined which distribution point or management points are available for the client within the boundary groups. So what I wanted to say here is uh, suppose I have a location called London and I have a location called Manchester. So these are two physical locations okay so now for london locations there would be a boundary group we will create a boundary groups that have let's suppose it is an active directory ad site service based boundary group so whatever the machine or whatever the users that belongs to this site will getting the policy from london location now again we will be having another site ad site services we will create a boundary with the ad site services so all the users that have the active directory site and services assigned to manchester will be assigned to this now whenever a boundary is created by default we have i mean by not by default but there as a best practices it is necessary that you assigned a distribution point and a management point as well as it is also important to give us soup these three roles are very important suppose uh, on london location we have a distribution point over here we have a management point over here and we have a sup point over here again we have a distribution point over here we have a management point over here and we have a sup point over here now there would be client attached to this thing suppose these are the client these are my client machines similarly there will be client machine on London location suppose these are my client machines so whenever there is a new man new policies or a new deployment this client will know that my location is London and this distribution point is assigned to me suppose DP01 MP01 and SUP01 these are the servers which are locally on the London servers on the London location so these are assigned to the uh, boundaries again there will be DP02, MP02 and SUP03 
so these are assigned to Manchester location so whenever a client required a software what the distribution uh, group or a distribution boundary will uh, sorry what the boundary will do over here it will assign the management point and a distribution point or SUP point from the boundary group so the content will be downloaded from here not from here got it same scenario will apply to Manchester as well whenever a Manchester machine required uh, applications to be downloaded it will go to the Manchester distribution point management MP point or management sub point to download the updates it will not go to London so the traffic will be flowed internally locally in your local area network got it so it will be fast communication or a fast deployment so that is uh, that is the purpose of having or defining the boundaries in a boundary group so we know that now let's talk about the feasibility and scalability in terms of feasibility and scalability boundary groups provide a feasibility and a scalability in SCCM deployment by allowing administrator to organize boundaries logically and according to their network topology or a business requirement moreover enabling it also enable administrator to define a specific content distributed or a client communication settings for a defined set of boundaries that optimize the usage of network traffic I mean this is the very best example simplifying management so by by grouping boundaries logically into boundary group SCCM administrator can simplify simplify the management task such as content distribution client communications same as above and the site assignment so these are some basic example of how SCCM boundaries and boundary groups can help us in terms of a better management of client distributions software distributions uh, policy distributions and all so let's understand the type of boundaries that we have now first boundary type is the IP subnet IP subnet type required subnet ID for example it has an IP address of 10.0.0.1 if you provide a network with a default gateway or a subnet mask value the subnet will automatically calculated when you save the boundaries we will check this when we'll be doing it active directory site there is another boundary that we have an active directory site boundary you specify the site name that you can type or a browse from a local forest from Active Directory we will also see this when we will be doing the practical lab now we have IPv4 prefix so we can type the IPv4 prefix address I mean it is a long address that we have to type it manually suppose like it is 2000 2001111 and it will be like 333 it should be 666 this is something that the IPv6 is assigned so this is how you can do it this is called the IPv4 and you can also assign the IP, IP address range or a VPN range IP address what I mean by IP address range suppose my IP address start from 192 uh, 190.1.1.6 and I wanted to have a range between 192.1.1.6 101 so we can assign a IP subnet as well defined based on our requirement so that is how the uh, that's, that is how uh, that is what the type of boundaries boundary type now there are some client uses of boundary groups so whenever uh, boundary group is there so automatically site assignment can be done you can find the sign system provided including it distribution point and content can be distributed from locally on that site as we defined earlier as we discussed earlier site update point state messages management point and preferred management point these are some basic uh, features that a boundary groups whenever we create a boundary group so we can assign these things to there and uh, we can have these features enabled 
So let's jump into the SCCM console and check how we can create the boundaries and boundary group and how, how we can crack, how we can assign the roles to it there as well. So now we are on our SCCM console uh, to configure the boundaries. We will go to administrator, administrations and then uh, I will click on hierarchy configuration and on the hierarchy configuration you will find uh, boundaries and boundary groups so these boundaries are predefined I have predefined it earlier so to define the boundary uh, we'll click, uh, we will right click or either we will right click on boundaries or inside the panel we will create a create boundary now uh, as we as we confirmed earlier also there, there are different types of boundaries IP based active directory site and services then we have IPv6, IPv6 prefix, IP address range and VPN. Uh, to create an IP based, we can give the name, suppose uh, I have a location or anything that you wanted to give uh, WMS range or something and you can give the IP WMS subnet and I can give the submit over here suppose 192.168.0.1 and we have to give the submit mask and ID 250 sorry it was 255.255.255.0 and submit mask has already taken it so this is how we can create a boundary for subnet now we will create a boundary for uh, let's create it for Active Directory uh, let's create a site for London I will click on browse and I think I have already there is only one default site so I will click on it otherwise when you click on you will get a different site as per your Active Directory so whatever the site that you wanted to create it select that site and click OK and apply this is already created so it will not allow you to do it also you can apply the groups a boundary group from where exactly it's trying to fetch the information for for uh, management point distribution point and soaps cup so this is how you will create the boundary for uh, active directory site and services now similarly it will it, the process will be same for uh, IPv6 and IP address range uh, there is a sli still slightly difference for the range suppose I have a London location I wanted to include 10.10.10.1 and there is a special requirement that I have to include only these five IP address okay so I can do that also so this is the example of I'm not giving the entire subnet mask or the range I'm just giving a range of 1 to 5 so it's only including 5 IP address into it so now uh, there is a new feature now in SCCM called VPN based boundaries so if I go on uh, create boundaries VPN and sorry I have to select VPN now you will find auto detect now what this is auto detect uh, if uh, if we have a management point configured I mean management point can determine if the client on if a client is connected from a VPN based that information get saved into that information get passed to your management point and the management point send that information to your SCCM site database so based on that site database your content will be delivered on the bound from the boundary group that was associated to it so in the back end if uh, I mean uh, there is one more catch into it if uh, your machine or if your VPN if your VPN solution uh, is using uh, PPTP that is point to point uh, tunneling pot protocol then only this auto detect or VPN feature will work over here I will show you what exactly that uh, uh, how you can find it uh, if you if you open a command prompt and type IP config slash all when your VPN is connected and if you find PPP adapter as is SCD then that means uh, your VPN is uh, your VPN solution has a has ability to configure as a auto detect 
and if it is not coming then you can't use this service it's simple and you can use auto as well as you can give the names also over here and the description and apply and okay that's it so this is how you can create uh, you can create this uh, boundaries now you can also create the boundary group suppose I wanted to create a boundary group suppose I want to create a boundary group for my corp corp development team I want to create it for my development team so what I will do I have created MIS subnet and this I will add this and apply OK so automatically this boundary group will be created and uh, the content will be delivered from it so this is how uh, the, the basic this was a very basic concept of boundaries and boundary group uh, thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for watching this video let's catch up in another video bye bye